Greetings, Marsha, and welcome to episode 206 of my modded Factoria playthrough. In this episode, we are going to mass produce some mud to make a landfill so we can finally get going with making circuits. Enjoy. We'll have to make something new here. And actually, we'll just go straight to the landfill because that's what we're doing. That is the ultimate goal with this. And let's just set it by machine. And see how this works. Doesn't take productivity modules, unfortunately. And this actually might be like a situation for a matrix solver, so we might want to just kind of handle this manually. So we'll come in here and say we want to make... Actually, where are the void recipes? Is it uh, hidden player crafting? There we go. So we want to void saline water. And who knows, let's just say 100. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know, how about 10? Then we come in here. And we can go down this path. And... Productivities aren't a thing, so... We'll just throw in speed modules to make this as compact as it can be. And it looks like it's linking. We actually don't want it to link. We just want to kind of come up with some random numbers. Because these are all kind of connected with each other. Huh. Why isn't this connecting? It seems like it should. Well, I guess we needed the matrix solver. It seems like it's still kind of connecting in weird ways, but we'll follow it down. Get our machines. Speed modules, and then we just have to put that in from a pump. Which, uh... I don't know if it's that one that's it's trying to use here. Let's see. Seems to be. Okay, so let's choose some numbers here. We kind of want this to be around a thousand because that's about as much as you can get out of a pipe. So we'll hit a thousand and that just kind of gives us an idea of uh, how this would link together. But 3.34 seems kind of odd. So let's make 900 so it's three and then, well, but all of these machines here are the things that are large. There we go. So we can maximize their use. So this is kind of like one grid that we can make that doesn't quite max out a pipe. It's very close in many aspects as far as water and all that, but that should fit on one square. And that would actually create on average 18 mud a second. And then we can link that to get an idea of what we'd create. So about one per second. We can certainly crank it up even more just to max out a belt. So we can do like 30. And this would have to be essentially two groups of machines. But that would work. And then that 30 would go into a clean three machines. But we can speed it up. And it looks like we're only going to get it down to two machines. But that'll make even more. So how long would that take to actually make what we need? Well, we know how much we're making per second. And we can kind of guess that let's say we needed 50,000 in total. And if we're making 1.2 a second, that means we'll need 41,000 seconds in order to make everything we need. So we can divide that by 60 to find out how many minutes it would be. 694 and then divide it again to find out how many hours. So 11.57 hours of letting that run to get what we need. Assuming that we actually need 50,000. Probably don't, but that's kind of an idea. Well, one thing is that if this is kind of a repeatable pattern, which it more or less will be, we'll need 
like two water pumps and basically two sets of machines since uh, the throughput is 1600, which is kind of too much for pipes, so we'd want to basically cut that in half. But we could probably just make more of them if it's like, oh man, we're just not making stuff fast enough. What did we order? Some bronze plates. So we do have a bit of a plan. Let's try to clarify the saline water away. We need to clean 10 of them. Okay. Well, as it turns out, we've got all the machines we need. Kind of right here. So we'll grab a few of what we need to start with. And let's find a nice place to start building. So there we go, and we have to remember that we're kind of dividing this by two. So, if we need 50 of them, it's more like 25. I don't think we can flip this stuff, so we probably want to be careful about how we do it. And where it's going to go. Something near water. Probably should be building stuff out here in the middle of nowhere rather than near our, the rest of our base. I don't know, it can like go out here maybe. Although that is kind of reserved for train stations. Well, the area down here is pretty quiet. It's pretty quiet here too. Let's try to go with this. Where we're assuming that it's going to be going down. And we'll just make this as compact as we possibly can. So we've got this pointed down. And we'll smash five of them together. Where it's one. Two, three, four, five, and then, what about the clarifiers? It's ten clarifiers, which actually kind of lines up pretty well, considering that this is ten into ten into ten, and then also a clarifier at the bottom. So, we should be able to really smash this stuff in here and just have it do this. And then the water will have to be delivered as required. And I'm not going to worry about trying to save this saline water because it's going to be so much we're not going to be able to do anything with it. And this isn't really going to run that often. We're basically just building it right now for a problem we have. And then we need a bunch of these. And since they're in straight lines, they're not really limited by anything other than essentially the water. So it's a group of five with one pump and then another group of five. And we would need to get the belt in here. It'd be something like this. Yeah, they won't let us flip them. So we want to make sure we get the orientation correct the first time. But we can put another one in there and this will create mud very inconsistently because it's randomized so there's not much we can do about that so we need a total of 10 of these actually the setup's smaller than i was expecting it to be i guess because everything's smashed together here but that should be our 50 and uh, we can also split these in half and have like three pumps on one side and three on the other. There we go. Needs the power poles. Got to interconnect them all. And of course some lights. Okay. And then that all feeds into the two machines, making what we need here. Let's combine them. Into a sorting warehouse. Limit it to a square. Then we have the output, which is 30 per second, which is going to be interesting. But stack inserters seem like they'll get the job done. I'm kind of worried about throughput though, so we'll just put 
the maximum amount we can get away with. And also some landfill. I guess we'll just use the storage chest. And we'll have this set to, well, probably like 50,000. Something like that. So we can use this. The enabled condition is less than 50,000. And then there we go. There's kind of a problem if there's no robots out there, but we certainly can do something about that. So we'll just grab it. <laughs> the robots help. Then we need to extend their range. There is an advantage of taking them all the way up here because then we can get rid of the extra fish we've run into. Because right now we're just kind of storing them, but we can chop them up and grow more fish with them. So I kind of want to extend the network this direction. We want to get the network all the way up to the fish choppers here. Specifically, this chest right here. We don't really need fish for health reasons anymore. So, we probably can throw them all in here. And where are fish stored? Well, animalis sounds correct. So, Factorian fish. Levac fish. Dorfloop fish. And Santa rays. And some parking spots. And chart sports. Okay. Let's add some more logistics rules and make this even more complicated. So we generally don't want to hang on to fish. Because we just don't need them. So we want that to be automatic because it's pretty easy to find ourselves with them. So we get that to zero. And then... We can pick them up here. And hopefully they don't get placed back inside. Kinda looks like they are. Well... I can force it. There we go. And now they have to go. I think that's all the fish. No! Come on! Sometimes I really don't understand why they operate that way. When they have a specific place to go, and yet... They decided to go in there. Could be they're just waiting to charge. It's kind of funny to see bots carrying fish around. So now all the fish will get chopped up. And turned into fish food. It's a very small improvement in efficiency. It doesn't really matter for this, but it makes the fish go away. And that's what's important. Okay, I think I said I wanted to kind of put them over here next to this setup. Well, we need to clear out a bunch of stuff. And probably want to place it down a little ways. Because if we want to expand it. They will be expanded in a straight sort of way if they're not all mashed right up there. They look like they're a pretty wide setup though. So how about we'll put it over here and not quite on that ore patch. So like right there. And of course we've got to get it connected. And get the bots in here. And lots of places to park. How about, like, over here, out of the way? So 
so they all should be on the way. Yeah, except they're taking a really weird path. Oh, I see. No, they're picking stuff up. I was thinking they were going down there to charge, but no, they're doing their jobs. And let's plop a radar in here, too. It is a very long distance for them to have to travel, though. Without any charge ports. So, let's put some along the way here. Looks like these clarifiers can use some modules too. Guess I could have put speed modules in there, but it's probably easier just to throw efficiencies in there and call it a day. We're getting pretty close to being able to test it. So it's three pumps per side. They can't take modules and one regular pump per side. So actually these can be straight through, I think. So let's try to space these out just to hopefully avoid any issues with pipes. And then when we hook up these offshore pumps, everything should start up. Kind of want to try to place it in the middle here. Which would be right there, and right here. Okay, let's see how this works. Is this the wrong kind of landfill? Yep. It should create it rather inconsistently. But on average, this should work. Whoop! <laughs> Watch your step. It seems to be uh, pretty reliably doing it. Let's put... nice display here. Kind of tell us how much landfill we have. And right now the number isn't going up because they're delivering us the landfill, but you can see the number is going up. Just kind of a question is how long is it going to take? But for now it seems to be working. Clarifiers are basically going at full speed. All these machines are basically green. The pipes are square as all things should be. So we'll have to see how this runs. For now I think I'll uh, run around the factory see if I can find some other little things to fix and uh, I'll come back to this in a bit and hopefully we'll have enough landfill to finish things up. Okay finally got all of this landfill placed. It wasn't uh, producing it quite fast enough with one of these setups, so I made a second one. <laughs> That's how Factorio works. If it's not going fast enough, build another one. Also, I've been doing some of the alien research to try to generate some stone, and it has helped. But from now on, there'll be a much higher repository of this landfill, where I think each one of these is going to go up to like 90,000 or something like that, plus the stone processing setup will also generate tons and tons so we should be pretty good on landfill for now of course now we're not going to need any for a while but when you do need landfill you need a lot of it the bus has been operating pretty good not really going to use that alien research at least anytime soon but it's nice for generating more rubber and this setup has been working pretty well you see we're up to 1.7k of rubber now, so for a passive way of making rubber, that's pretty good. And we really don't need very much of it, so hopefully that will hold us off. 
I did notice that we were building up on methane gas, which makes sense because it's the lowest priority item here because we use it for other things. So I put another machine up here to crack it to methanol gas, which then is being put on a drone and being sent all the way down here where we're making plastic. So potentially that methanol gas can go into making plastic or it can be burned off as fuel. So this would be a better use of it than just burning it up there. Of course, everything's kind of maxed out now, but uh, I put some more drones on there and hopefully it'll catch up. We'll have to keep an eye on it. But good news is, is we have our space now. So now we can expand our electronics bus. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.